Welcome to the Canadian Expat, where we continue on our journey speaking with Canadians and Canadian organizations abroad so that we might gain a bit of inspiration, obtain some advice, and perhaps hear a few cautionary tales. Today, we go to Shanghai. At just over 26 million people, the city of Shanghai is the most populous municipality not only in China, but in the world. It is the financial hub of China proper and for all intents and purposes, the gateway to trade within the world's largest market. It is also home to the Canadian Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, the only Canadian Chamber of Commerce in China. It is also home to my next guest, Matthew Cormier, the executive director of the chamber, originally from a small village in northern Quebec. Matthew personifies the reason why we here at the Canadian Expat love to say that Canadians living abroad are the single most valuable resource that we export. His work with the chamber and prior to joining has helped perhaps hundreds upon hundreds of Canadian-based companies find success in the sometimes murky waters of Chinese international trade. Matthew, welcome to the Canadian Expat. Hi, Adam. How are you? Matthew, if you don't mind, let's start with you. What brought you to China in the first place? Well, I used to work for Quebec government for over 10 years, and uh, I was at some point responsible for China trade export. And it came up one day, there was a position here at the Canadian uh, consulate uh, where Quebec had a small office and I got the job. So I was responsible for four years uh, regarding trade, investment, and also economic services uh, for Quebec, basically helping Quebec companies to, uh, to do business here in China. And at the end, I, I, they, they called me back home and I, I love the city and the country so much that I decided to quit government and go work in the private sector, again, uh, helping uh, Canadian companies uh, on the consulting side. Uh, and now here I am, uh, handling the Canadian Chamber of Commerce here in Shanghai for uh, a bit more than uh, five months now. So relatively new to the Chamber, but you've been in China for quite a while. Yeah, so this year is going to be my eighth year uh, living in Shanghai. Uh, my, but my first trip was in uh, 2001. I also study a little bit uh, in Nankai University in Tianjin University. So I've been back and forth uh, for over uh, 18 years now. Let's go to the chamber, which is an absolute pillar of strength for Canadian companies wanting to do business in China. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of the chamber? Yeah, so um, Canadian company have been around for quite a long time. We have a company like uh, Manulife that had a, a presence over 100 here in China. So at some point, a few companies decided to gather together to uh, to pull the resources and uh, uh, to have a, a, a stronger presence here. And they founded over 40 years ago um, an association called Canada China Business Council, the CCBC. And in 2008, uh, the Shanghai chapter decided to, to separate in order to, to be more responsive for their local company that, has, that had a presence here in Shanghai. So, so the chamber is now active for um, over 10 years. And um, we, we cover mostly Shanghai region and uh, all the provinces around Shanghai. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that yours is the only Canadian Chamber of Commerce in China. However, there still is the Canada-China Business Council located in Beijing. Is that still correct? Yeah, so the, the council is mostly based in Canada. They have chapter everywhere uh, in most of the cities. And they have their representative office in Beijing. They also have a small chapter here in, uh, in, in Shanghai, but we, we collaborate uh, in really good terms, we, we actually, we taking care of the SME and company that are based here in Shanghai. Meanwhile, the Canadian, um, the CCBC is, is uh, giving a lot of services and information about China for companies that are back home in Canada. So in terms of your membership, 
What sort of industries are represented at the chamber? Uh, it's quite, um, um, we, we have a lot of companies that are represented here at the chamber, over 170 corporate members that gathers more than 700 individual members, and they come from a whole range of uh, industry. We have, of course, all the, the local company like FNB, uh, services, education, hospitality, but also on the manufacturing um, and technology uh, or uh, even R&D side. So it's really the a miroir of what Canada industry is. That's what we are right here at the, at the CanCham. I would love to hear about opportunities given the current climate that we find relations between Canada and China in now. What sort of opportunities are there or are there still opportunities for Canadian companies to move into China? Yeah, sure. We all know that um, there's a political situation between China and Canada right now. Uh, this is at the diplomatic level. Our, our diplomats are working hard on, on this case to, to make sure that uh, uh, they can uh, free our, our, that China could eventually free our Canadian citizenship that are been locked up here. But on the business side, I think that this market of 1.3 billion of consumer, uh, they cannot say no to all the Canadian expertise or Canadian natural resources or our creativity. Uh, we also have a long history of relationship with China in many different fields. Um, this could be from uh, healthcare to uh, um, IT and, and so on. So there's a lot of relation that uh, are still going on. And, and I have to say that on the business side, things are really going smoothly. Um, we have a lot of companies that are based here, that they employ a lot of Chinese people. There's a lot of project going on. Um, and, and it goes in, in many fields. So China is changing. They, they're moving from um, export-oriented uh, and uh, economy towards a more uh, consumer goods uh, market. So there's a lot of, uh, of people here in the cities that are, um, they have a bigger um, capacity to, to consume. And they're looking for, like everybody else, they're looking for good products, safe product, good education for their children. Uh, they want to have uh, uh, access to, to what, it, what is best. And, and I think that uh, a lot of Canadian companies, they can offer that. So many things when you talk about, for instance, consumer good, uh, China is changing a lot. They're looking for good products. And a way to access to those goods is something totally different that we have back home is the e-commerce. So we know that in Canada, we have... Of course, the, the, the major American um, e-commerce platform like Amazon, eBay, and so on. But here, it's totally another range of, um, of e-commerce with Alibaba, Tencent, uh, GD. There's many platforms that basically, um, like for instance me, I don't even go out anymore to, uh, to, to shopping mall or to the grocery. I order everything online. And because of the logistic, logistic is so good in China in terms of uh, delivery, uh, railway, um, ports, and everything. So it's really fast to to get goods around. So with only your phone, you could order pretty much everything in a day and from all around the world. And it will come within the next 24 hours or uh, within the couple of days delivered at your home. Uh, it's quite easy. It's quite uh, cheap. So a lot of um, Canadian products can be uh, sell. Everywhere around China, we're talking about, for instance, live lobster that we're selling here in China. You could get, uh, uh, of course, a lot of uh, food product, but also uh, some um, cosmetic clothes and so on. So this is this is something that is totally new for the, the Canadian uh, companies, because in Canada, uh, people, they like to go to the store, they like to see, of course, they're going to shop online, they're going to they're going to get information online before to, to go shop, but they, they still like to go shopping uh, on site. So here it's totally different. And this increased the number of consumer you could reach, right? Um, also, everything regarded technology to support that grow. There's a lot of things happening here that needs to um, a lot of IT support, for instance. So we have many companies um, like in the gaming industry or the entertainment industry, VR, that maybe in Canada or in the States, the market is not quite ready yet to, 
to integrate such a technology. But here in China, the market demands it. It's they, they need so the the level of acceptance of technology is way much higher and faster here in China. So this is where in uh, we where we have some Canadian companies that maybe they, they're going to develop some product or IT uh, solution back home, and they're going to be able to deploy it here. We see this in e-commerce, um, transportation, healthcare, uh, education, and so on. So again, a lot of um, uh, opportunity in those sector. I would say that um, finally, the 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 green green and environmental sector is really really uh, big here in China. Despite of what we might hear here and there in Canada on the news uh, about China um, pollution and so on, we of course there is a lot of issues here in China regarding pollution uh, on air quality control, water pollution, and so on. But on the other hand. The government really have, they have the, the power of their will to make things change. And there's a lot of regulation, a lot of laws that are implemented, not only at the national level, but also at the, um, uh, more locally, that, that really makes a difference. So they integrate a lot of technology, a lot of systems, new way of doing things. Um, for instance, a few, few uh, months ago, the China, the Shanghai government decided to really implement recycling everywhere so now it's not a matter of if it's a matter of really how fast they're going to recycle so everybody recycling it's 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 not a matter that uh, you you decide to do it or not that's the rule right so again a lot of opportunity in those uh, in this field uh, in in china and not only in china but also in shanghai part of our goal is to inspire canadians that are either currently living abroad or are going to be moving abroad. So thinking of a, the scenario where perhaps a Canadian is in China now or going to move to China in the near future and they find themselves with an opportunity to uh, maybe market a product that they think would do well in China, talking about first steps, would you recommend joining the chamber, for example? Well, the, maybe not at, at first, but Eventually, they could join some of our activity, go on the website, talking to our members. That's a good way to start because here in China, knowledge is power. You cannot just read a book about how to do things here, what's going to happen, or you cannot just take a phone and call somebody and ask the price. This is not how it works here. It's all about relationship and getting into those network uh, to, to gather information because the, the country is big. It's quite complicated. The doing business here, it's a bit different than back home. So you need to get access to that knowledge. And how to do so is by talking to people that has this information. So that's what the Chamber does. We Our main goal here is to, of course, support Canadian company that wants to do business here. But at the same time, we also support the Canadian community that are based here, right? That, that, that works for Canadian company, but also for uh, some Chinese local companies. So this is really important for us to, to give access to our members, but also that people are traveling here. So we, we organize a, a lot of activity to make sure that we can have a face-to-face -face meeting to get the warm information about what China is really about, how to do things around, what's the do and don'ts, uh, who, who's there to help out. So this is what we give to, uh, to people that come here. So one thing that if somebody at some point would like to uh, to maybe um, go go to China and test the market, first would be to 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 start back home in Canada. So maybe using CCBC, Canada China Business Council, or uh, some support from the federal or provincial government. Sometimes they organize activity just to get to know about how was the sector, who can help you uh, in terms of uh, market access, but also for financing. Uh, maybe to get some loans, some uh, some financial help to 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 make you uh, to go to those pro to those place. After that, it's you have to come here. So uh, you have to do a face to face meeting, right, with uh, with the community and to to know more people. So um, even though that we we all hearing those stories about what's happening between Canada and China, I have to say that China is a safe place to come. It's uh, one of the uh, easiest place to go around. It's quite easy to move uh, back and forth. Uh, 
Of course, like everywhere else in the world, you need to follow the rules, right? Respect the law. Make sure that your uh, your, your travel documents are are in in good terms. Your passport, your visa, and so on. And once you have that, you you can just come here and participate to maybe some of our events, but maybe uh, some of our other people events. So there's many things that um, that can be do uh, around, but the the real maybe I could give some um, few advice to people that would come in like in, in terms of business because things are, are a bit different than back home. And one of the first advice I always give to company to come here is to first make sure that before you land in China with maybe a brand, a product, or a company that your IP is protected. So in China, there's something which is totally different than back home is. The, the regarding the trademark so your the branding of your trademark here is first come first serve so anybody can just take your, your brand and go to the registration office and register it so you don't have to hone it elsewhere it's just the first come first serve so that's really important before you go to a trade show before you hand out those business card uh, make sure that your IP is protected that's uh, we've seen a lot of things in the past like large restaurant brand or cookie brand that they cannot access the market because some uh, um, some water system owns now their IP. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's quite um, um, difficult. So that's really important to first protect your IP. And how to do so? There's a lot of people that can help you out in the market. We have some members that offer such a services like uh, IP protection, legal, or some uh, consulting advice. We... We really, um, we really recommend that people that come here that they use this sort of services because this is the know-how. Sometimes people back home they tend to think that they can do everything, right? Because in Canada it's not that complicated. You can have your product, control your marketing, have your uh, accounting done, and so on. But here, every single aspect of a business. It's a business itself because it's different in China. So, so we tend to say to our, our the people that, that comes visit us, focus on what you're good at doing. Is this developing a website? Is this uh, selling some um, uh, maple syrup or things like that? Make sure that you're good in your in what you're doing, and let them all the administrative or uh, technicality Chinese technicalities to people that knows that. Because uh, it's quite time-consuming here. And a last piece of advice I would say is come. You need to come and travel often. There's many flights, direct flights from uh, Canada to China, from Vancouver, Calgary, Montreal, Toronto. There's a lot of, uh, it's quite easy to, to travel here. Um, and once you're here, it's quite simple uh, to, to, to go around. So come here. Uh, meet those people, so so at the end you could uh, you, you you will have some uh, right information to make your, the best of your project happen. Awesome advice, thank you. In terms of the chamber, and I don't want to take too much of your time, but in terms of the near future, can you talk a little bit about what is happening at the Canadian Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai? Um, there's many things happening. Um, we at the chamber, what we do, we we help. Canadian com companies, but we also make sure that our community here uh, could uh, express themselves and make sure that the, we, we can share our values and and know who to let know um, to the Chinese and our counterparts who we are, what we represent, and so on. So so we organize a lot of things. Um, the, the latest numbers in Shanghai Hongdi, we're talking about uh, sixteen thousand to eighteen thousand Canadian that are here based in Shanghai. Um, at the chamber, we we have some uh, uh, social media that we 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 gather around twenty five thousand followers that follows us on our media and uh, and we organize activity for them. So we want to do more activity so they can again share the values about um, about Canadian values, uh, diversity, um, openness, and inclusivity. You know all those those values that make us Canadian. We want to make sure that we can share with. With, with our, our Chinese friends. So we organize Canada Day, uh, Christmas party, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, uh, Cabana Suc, or many uh, things that, that, that shows how we are Canadians. So we want to do more of these activity. 
uh, to engage our Canadian company, but also to link with uh, with our our Chinese uh, friends and Chinese company that would. We were trying to 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 build ties and and uh, biz and to do business with them. So we're gonna do more of these. At the same time, we uh, we're working on a communication plan to people back home, to uh, our our members, our uh, government, our association, to to just remind them that in these time of uncertainties, uh, on a more diplomatic level, that China is still open for business. There's a lot of people, a lot of Canadians that are here that are making a lot of uh, economical value to Canada because we're selling some of their goods. Uh, and it, it's it's a safe place to do business. So we want to remind them that uh, continue to, to come, continue to uh, to engage, uh, to reach out. And this is how in, in this time that we're going to be able to maintain a communication and, and, and some good collaboration. So we're going to be working on this in the upcoming months. And of course, we're going to work closely with our uh, partners, so people like the federal government, provincial government, um, they they have a, a large presence here. They're helping a lot of Canadians and companies abroad. So we're just gonna make sure that that again we 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 still get their uh, their support. That they they have an open discussion with our community, just to know what's going on, uh, what are the trends, uh, what are their services that are there, the programs, different programs to help our companies and. And we're going to pass this information to our members and our community uh, to make sure that we can uh, we, we can be successful on the on the long term uh, run here. Thank you so much. And thank you for everything that you and the chamber does for Canada. Perfect. So I'd like to welcome everybody for the Canadian expat that I'd like to, to visit Shanghai. It's a beautiful city. And don't hesitate to uh, to engage with us at Cancham. We have many activity and we'll be more than happy to, uh, to link you up with uh, some of our uh, uh, community here. Thank you so much. And for all those that are watching, thank you very much for taking the time. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to participate in one of these conversations, please comment below. We'd love to speak with you. Until next time. Uh -huh.